barbecue to a dangerous destination? As spring breakers look to escape the cold, there's now some hesitancy about flocking to Mexico. We've had zero safety issues. We've had zero problems. Plus, at bat for Andrea. Laurel is a small community, but with big hearts. We'll head to Laurel as dozens gather to honor a friend and aim to hit a home run. Neighbors helping neighbors. It felt good that we helped as a community helped another community. Fromberg delivers a big thanks to Laurel after the community helped them build back after those June floods. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. Governor Greg Gianforte and Republican state lawmakers celebrating what they call big steps for Montana taxpayers. The governor signing some of his top budget priorities into law. Gianforte signed eight bills, including six that together implement hundreds of millions of dollars in immediate tax rebates and long-term tax reductions. Today, we're making it easier for Montanans to raise a family, to earn a good living, to own a home, to retire comfortably, and achieve their American dream. I think this legislation is a promise delivered. When we ran our campaigns in the fall, we said, we're going to shock the public. We are going to actually take money out of the Treasury and give it back to them because we have over collected. And House Bill 222 uses another $280 million to fund property tax rebates of up to $500 on primary residences each of the next two years. Other bills in the package would lower income tax rates starting in 2024. Well, Democratic leaders were critical, though, saying in a statement what the governor signed into law today is over $1 billion in reckless spending that disproportionately benefits the wealthiest Montanans. It does nothing to help working and middle class families get through the cost of living crisis. New at 10 tonight, fire breaks out of the Laurel business, leaving behind heavy damage. Firefighters were called to the Cotter sewer about 645 tonight. And as you can see in some of these pictures, flames were shooting from the building. Well, several people reported hearing an explosion, but interim fire chief J.W. Hopper told me he can't confirm that right now and that the county is investigating the fire. He says there were no injuries, but it does appear that there were several vehicles inside the building. The sudden collapse of two banks is sending shockwaves across the financial community today. Silicon Valley Bank, which finances many tech companies, went down on Friday. And yesterday, Signature Bank in New York followed. The closures have many in fear, with some even rushing to their own banks looking to withdraw cash. And on Wall Street, a number of bank stocks opened sharply lower this morning, with trading even being halted for some banks because of the instability. So despite the troubles, President Joe Biden is assuring Americans that it's not a sign of things to come, and the American banking system remains strong. Look, the bottom line is this. Americans can rest assured that our banking system is safe. Your deposits are safe. Those banks, thousands of miles away, but the situation has many here in Billings and across Montana concerned as well. With more on the impact for the Treasure State and where exactly that level of concern is at, here's our own Haley Monaco. The shutdown of the U.S. 16th largest bank in California on Friday has left many asking questions. One being, could this happen in our own state? A wave on both coasts of bank closures disrupted the nation over the weekend. Now the question is, will that happen again? Will it be like a domino thing? But lifelong Billings resident John Robinson doesn't fear a shutdown here in Montana. I don't think it'll happen here, no. We have a lot of local credit unions and smaller banks here that shouldn't have issues. Robinson isn't a banker, but Carrie Hagerberg with the Montana Bankers Association and financial planner Gary Buchanan both echo Robinson's thoughts. Montana banks are well capitalized, well reserved, well managed. Montana banking system is strong and I think in general Montana banks are stronger. One reason banks are safe in the Treasure State, according to Buchanan, is the businesses they work with. Montana banks in general do not have the exposure to crypto which took down the two New York banks, and to new IPOs and relatively new high-tech companies, many that have not earned profits yet. Scenes like this from California are startling. Long lines of people waiting to withdraw money from their accounts. That's something Buchanan is hoping won't happen here. I think it's going to be rocky for a while because I think the first thing people do often is panic and 
I'd suggest you don't. This happened at a, a very rapid pace. Once the word you know got out that the bank was struggling, uh, people rushed to take their funds out of the bank, which exacerbated the problem. And that's something Robinson says he understands. He, like many others, is closely watching what happens, but doesn't feel the need to withdraw his money. Uh, I think when you're talking like hundreds of millions of dollars and somebody pulls that out versus, uh, you know, if I pull out the $387 in my checking account, I'm probably not going to cause a run on the bank. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. It's spring break for many this week, and AAA says international travel is up 30% from last year. In one of the top destinations, Mexican getaways like Cancun. But in the wake of recent violence where four Americans were kidnapped, some may be nervous about heading south. MTN's Jackie Coffin takes a closer look at what Americans need to know about going to Mexico. Cozumel, a vacation destination on the books here at Family Fun Scuba and Snorkel. And this shop travels to Mexico a lot. But is it safe for tourists right now? I stopped in to get a master opinion. When Mark Dean thinks of Mexico, his mind goes underwater. Mexico to me is wonderful. Just like every place, 99.9% um, .9 of the people are just happy to be there, happy to see you. We've had zero safety issues. We've had zero problems. With a group headed to Mexico this weekend and another trip planned in September, Dean feels safe headed to the island near Cancun, even with trouble in the northern part of the country. It's kind of like anything in life. If you do the right things, all is good and well. Cancun, Riviera Maya, and Mexico City were all listed as top spring break travel destinations for U.S. travelers this year by AAA. But anxiety about traveling south is spreading, and Monday the Texas Department of Public Safety warned Americans not to go there for spring break. This after four Americans were kidnapped, two of whom were killed in the border city of Matamoros on March 3rd in what is believed to be a case of mistaken identity by drug cartel members. Montana Senator John Tester says it's a tragic reminder that when Americans travel abroad, they no longer have the protections of home. The truth is, it's a foreign country. It's not the United States. It doesn't matter which foreign country it is. You're depending upon that country's government to keep you safe. And sometimes it's inadequate, as I believe it was with the four Americans who went into Mexico. Not all of Mexico is equal when it comes to tourism, at least in the eyes of the U.S. State Department. For popular spring break destinations like Cancun, Tulum, and Playa del Carmen, the U.S. Embassy says it's safe to travel, although the government does recommend increased situational awareness, avoiding bad areas, and getting out of any dangerous situations fast. Following the kidnapping in Matamoros, the State Department says firmly, don't go there. Dean says a lot of situations come down to common sense and to see Mexico for what it has to offer by land or by sea. The bottom line is we have felt nothing but safe the entire time we've been there. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. It was one of the warmest days that we've seen for a while at the Billings Airport today. 48 degrees right at the 30 year average for the daytime high despite starting off on a bit on the chilly side. Notice also that now we're in daylight saving time. We have sunrise happening right about 730 in the morning and sunset is after seven in the evening. We're doing OK as far as precipitation goes in the short term, but temperatures today across the state a real contrast 20s across northern Montana to the 40s, even 50s, 53 for you in Livingston this afternoon and winds kicking up now tonight so far the top wind gust recorded at Livingston 41 miles per hour it'll get stronger than that tonight we'll have more of the details on that coming up in a few minutes tonight in Laurel the community came together to honor one of their own Andrea Benson who died suddenly last summer Benson's husband is looking to carry on the family's strong softball tradition by building a new batting cage in the city or David J takes us to the fundraiser where dozens came out in hopes of making his dream a reality the whole idea is to honor a woman who is passionate about softball and passionate about helping softball players and bring the families and the players and the community together here at the Woods Power Grip Complex or possibly at another location in Laurel. 
Softball has always been a big part of life for the Benson family. Freshman Addison and my other daughter Josie, she's a junior, they absolutely love softball. Andrea Benson died unexpectedly last summer, and now her husband Sydney and their daughters hope to build a softball complex and name it after Andrea. Andrea would often say, you know, win or lose, do it with class. Softball itself not only grows leaders, but it helps you deal with loss. They've had loss, they've shed a lot of tears through softball, they've shed tears um, losing their mother, um, but they grow through that. You know, they become stronger and stronger women. Family, friends, and the community came out for the very first Carlton in the community fundraiser, this one to help with the proposed softball complex. We're just looking to um, help improve our community and honor Andrea the best we can. They want to honor Andrea at the Woods Power Grip softball complex or at a new facility that would be built if voters approve a bond issue for Laurel schools that includes softball fields. If you say the name Andrea Benson or Whitknack, which was her maiden name, you just associated her with softball. She was, she was wonderful at it, she was very dedicated to it, and she passed that love down to her children as well. Andrea was a friend of mine, um, we grew up together, and you know, I just thought that this was a great way to honor her memory and give back to the community at the same time. And Sydney Benson says, seen the community come out for a fundraiser is comforting for his family. Anybody that's lost a loved one, um, it, it is difficult to go through that process. This makes me feel, feel really good. In Laurel, David J, MTN News. A Clancy student will represent Montana on the national stage at the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Over the weekend, students from all across Montana made their way to Montana State University for the annual Treasure State Spelling Bee. And Clancy Elementary School student Natalie Russ not only won the bee, she even took home a cash prize. The Scripps National Spelling Bee takes place in May in National Harbor, Maryland. Well, ahead on the MTN News at 10 here on Q2, saying thanks. A one town hit hard by last year's flooding is recognizing the help they got from a neighboring city. And later, a vinyl resurgence that has people returning to records. Stay with us.